Well, what's the first thing you should do when you looking at reverse engineering something like this? Well, have a look and see if there's a service manual. So I had a look, and there is. So uh, it's pretty detailed, and it does give the pin out of this connector. And it is a serial data connection, it looks like. So all I need to do is find the supply voltage, and then uh, have a look maybe at the data. Just look and see if we can reverse engineer the format of the data. That didn't seem to be in the service manual, not surprisingly. We might be able to use that display on something else. But in there it also said that here, where is it? Down do, 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 near IC801, there's a test point. And if you short that, which I have done, it's there, you end up with a test mode. So now when I switch it on, I don't need to uh, press any buttons or anything. It comes on and it cycles through a display which is the version number of the firmware and all segments on and I think if you press a button just looking at the thing at the moment so it's all off, all on in the microprocessor version display you can then hold the pause button now I'll need to find out where the pause button is as I've taken everything apart so one of these buttons it's the pause button. I'm trying to find out which one it is. Which one's the pause button? Right, so it's on the front panel. And I think it is the button that is here. So if I press this button here, let's try my finger. Nothing happens. Maybe that's not pause. I thought it was pause. Let's try some other buttons and see what happens. That one doesn't do anything. Okay, that one. What's that? That looks to be play. So that's P00A8. Not sure what that is. Okay, pause just holds the current display. You need the display button, apparently, wherever that is. Display button. Don't know which one that is. Doesn't seem to be any of those. The display button. Right, usefully that is this one here, I think. So that's displaying 0 and A8, whatever that is. Well, anyway, there's quite interesting stuff. So there is a test mode on here, so the whole thing's running now in test mode. So we can get different displays on the LCD, and that means we can check that the data decoding is accurate. Also, if I turn it off and on again, you can see the full LCD setup. Let's try pause. I think it was that, wasn't it? Yeah, so pause has paused it. So you can see exactly what the segments are on the LCD. It's vaguely useful. There's a few dashes across the top. There's the two, well, was it five, no, six dot matrix display characters there. There's some digits here, so they're sort of vaguely useful. And a few other symbols. There's a battery symbol, that would be useful. The rest of them, maybe not. So that could be usable, especially with the dot matrix display and the digits down the bottom and a few other bits and bobs. So yeah, that does look like it might be useful. Uh, let's put it in another mode first. Yeah, so this is the test mode, I think, self-diagnostic mode. So if you press... Let's have a look. If you press forward and backwards, which are these two here, I think. Oh, let's try pressing with that. Yeah, you get different information. You can go forwards and backwards. Where is this information? Okay, so they're error, error things. 
So are there any errors that have occurred? It looks like there's no errors. So that's an error log. And when we get to R on the left hand side in that character there, R000, that is the total recording time in minutes, in hexadecimal. And it uh, returns zero when it goes above a certain limit. So looks to me like, uh, well, apparently more than 886 discs have been recorded on here, but I think that's quite unlikely. It looks like there's no errors, which is a bit surprising, as most of the circuitry is disconnected. So that's it, it just goes round those, those displays. It's not really a self-diagnostic mode, it's more a show me an error log mode. So you can reset that with a couple of other keys. But that gives us quite a lot of character displays and so on there. And then the power on test, that will give you dot matrix, followed by no segments on, followed by all segments on, so that'll be useful as well. So I think, yeah, standard chance of reverse engineering that, so that looks to be a useful little LCD module. I'm obviously not work used to working with Sony kit because. I kept looking at the case that I dismantled to find out what the keys are. But it's written on the PCB, so it's on both PCBs. So you don't need the case, you can just have a look at the silk screen that you've got on there, the legend, and it's all there. And I'm obviously used to working with much cheaper equipment. <laughs> so yeah, I can throw the case away. <laughs>